with York College head coach Brandon Childs in the post game here after Amherst defeats York 19-16 the final Gary Stein Brandon Childs just a fantastic lacrosse game so let's start with that for a moment as you manage that team just talk a little bit about the game yeah it was it was definitely crazy it was different than the way that you know most of the games have played out for us this year and I give Amherst a ton of credit I mean for starters They've been hit by the injury bug bad, you know, and with Gonzalez going down, they the next guy stepped up for him. I thought number 25 on defense for them was a real difference maker. And I think, um, you know, seldom do you feel as the opposing coach that a defender, you know, had an impact on the game. It's usually some other kid has scored a bunch of goals or, but they number 25 on their defense, you know, really stood, stepped up and um, I thought played a great game. And as a result of all of that, it felt like, Every time we would claw our way back and we'd get it to one or we would tie it, we would make a mistake and then Amherst would just capitalize. It was like every mistake we made ended up in our own goal. Um, and that, to our team's credit, we would then battle back again and we'd go down two and then we'd come back and tie it. And then they would, they, you know, we just never got, we did that like five times where we would have to claw back from a two goal deficit. We would do it and then the next play would hurt us, you know, and, and they never let us get all the way back to taking that lead. Um, and a lot of credit to Amherst for that. If I'm not mistaken, I think 25 Lawson Laverty is the guy that you're talking about. He had a big cause turnover late in the game, played well all game. Talk about the battle at the at the faceoff dot. I mean, two heavyweights there battling goal for goal at yeah. the end of the game. That was fun to watch. Yeah, that's actually the second time that's happened to us this <laughs> year. When we were up at RIT, um, Fasapani scored, and then the RIT guy scored on the very next faceoff, or vice versa. I can't remember how it went, and then it happened again today. And you know, like, on the second day, at, at some point, like, it's just the players out there running around and making plays. And at that <laughs> point, when both face-off guys score back-to-back, -back, as a coach who's going to do this, like, for his whole life, and, you know, it, at that point, you just sit back and you're like, you know, th this is awesome. You know, the kids are having the time of their lives right now. And that was what was going through my mind in that moment. You know, I would have rather that ball not gone in our goal. But at the end of the day, quite, um, you know, quite a fun, you know, I'm sure it was fun for you to watch. Not so much fun for me, but it was fun to watch, I'm well, sure. I, actually, I wanted to ask you about that because, yes, it was fun for me to watch. And I'm sure it was fun for all our viewers to watch. You, ha well, but, but we're watching. You have to manage the game. Yeah. So how do you do that? How do you manage your emotions? your players emotions strategically like yeah. all that stuff involved yeah well we always talk to our team about the next 15 seconds um you know i heard this years ago but um uh, I think it was Army football. They had a big upset. Maybe they beat Michigan or something. And I, I heard their coach say that if you if you think about trying to beat Michigan, you're not going to beat Michigan. If you think about breaking a first down into three yards, you can just ask your team to go get three yards, right? And so that we kind of took that and stole it into 15 seconds. And we just ask our guys to win the next 15 seconds. And that's how we try to manage the ebbs and flows of a game like today. And, you know, and I'm proud of our guys. Like there was a couple times where – there was a lot of backbreaking goals that happened, and we just we just stayed at it. Even at the end, off the timeout, we we brought our goalie out, and he played attack, and we doubled the ball, and then we ended up doing that really well, you know. And we're down four at that point, you know. We could have just broken down, but our team responded well, and we were able to get another goal off of it. And that's just that next fifteen second mentality. Just want to ask you about a couple of players. We'll start with Will Harnick. Last year, you guys or you lost two from your attack last year. I think Wolf and Rank are gone. You moved Harnick up from the midfield. Burbank now a freshman. He's playing well. Talk a little bit about Will. Harnick, 12 goals in two games in this tournament. Yeah, he's just steady. You know, he's a senior. He's, <laughs> it's kind of funny. He's one of, like, I, sometimes I'm not sure he has a pulse. Like, you know, he's a. Uh, I certainly hope he does. Yeah, he's a civil engineering major. He's mm. all business. He's one of the most mature kids I've ever coached. And he's just even keel, you know, and I think he does a really good job letting the game come to him instead of trying to make too much happen. Um, and he just plays like a, he plays like a, a guy who's been doing it a long, long time. And he's just steady for us. And what about Ethan Green, really on both ends of the field? What a presence he is. Yeah, he's. He's a special player, um, and, and he's he's great on defense. He's great on ground balls and the wings of the faceoff, and then obviously he can push transition and 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 score and and make the right reads. And so we ask him to do a ton, you know, because he's capable of doing a ton. And I'm glad he he wears green on game days for sure. So let me ask you a final question. Last year when you came to this tournament, you were two and two. You wanted to find out about yourselves in this tournament. You did, and you won the tournament, and then won 16 straight games after that, all the way. To the NCAA semifinals. Where are you right now? 
Yeah, you know, I think this is – and we have a lot of games left, you know. Like some other teams are 8-9 in. We're not. Um, and so this feels a little bit like – we kind of know where we're at at this point. We know what our weaknesses are. We know what our strengths are. And we just got to get back to work and fine tune it. And that's the beauty of this. You know, I'm sure every coach after this interview is going to tell you like how beneficial this is for their team and their program. And that's certainly the case for us. And we're going to, we're going to learn a ton from this. Um, two totally different types of games coming down here. Um, and you know what, like if, if we get involved in a shootout down the road, um, we're, we're going to definitely be, be better off having played today's game at the pace that it was played. You'd probably rather have the game in the 10s and 11s rather than the 19s and the 20s, but hey, it is what it is. Yeah, well, I think I might have spoke this into existence because I said to um, yesterday, Coach Jancic, the retired Gettysburg coach, was here. And uh, we were joking around because both of our teams have won plenty of games 9-7. <laughs> and I said, imagine waking up one morning knowing, <laughs> knowing your team's going to score 17. That sounds pretty good. And then here it was. We scored a bunch of goals but gave gotcha. up gave up too many, obviously. Hey, great job. Thank yeah. you so much. Thank you. Brandon Childs, head coach, York Spartans. Gary Stein, GoMustangSports.tv.